I'm Max Goldman and we're here at the Sands Point Preserve and as you can tell by the remaining snow on the ground we'll be doing a winter nature walk this time. Um, so let's get started. We're here at the old ice pond at the preserve. Nowadays not really used for ice um, but it does freeze over if it gets cold enough in the winter as you can see right now. Um, but back in the day they used to cut up this ice into big blocks. They'd store it in the ice house over there which suffered from a couple of tree falls, I think back in 2016. Um, so we're entering the main part, or the one of the main woodlands here at the preserve. Um, this is a really intact forest. If you can, I'd highly suggest making your way out to the preserve uh, if it snows again this winter, because there's something really special about the forest in winter. It's a totally different vibe. Um, it's e eerily silent and um, incredibly beautiful. Um, we found some deer prints here. Now it's a little melty because it's warmed up, but you can tell, you see how there's two little hooves in there? You can kind of see the hoof prints. If you come up to this side, you can see it a little bit better. Um, so these are deer. Um, there are deer at the preserve. Um, whether or not they actually mate here is a little bit of a mystery, but they do move around. And instead of thinking of the preserve as like this closed off area, it's part of the larger mosaic of the entire peninsula where all these animals don't really abide by these arbitrary lines that we draw um, and they kind of it's very important for them to be able to move as food moves and as the season changes so that they can survive yeah so these look like they're fox prints now i'm not a print expert but um they do look like dog prints foxes are dogs they're a, a wild dog and there's no human companion walking alongside these tracks obviously it's a little bit difficult because like i mentioned earlier um, the, the warmer temperatures kind of take the definition out of a lot of these tracks, but it's cool to come here in the winter also because you can see a lot of different animals that you might not actually see in person, but you get to see um, the evidence of, that they leave behind. So although I didn't find raccoon tracks on the day that I was filming at the preserve, a few days earlier I did find some in the snow, and I want to talk about raccoon tracks really quickly because raccoons might be some of the most common animals that we see on a daily basis. They can actually put their thumb and their pinky finger together, although their thumbs aren't truly opposable. Um, and this is what allows them to break into all of our garbage so easily, along with their incredible intelligence. Um, they're actually ranked to be smarter than cats and wreak havoc on garbage day. You might recognize this. In fact, it might be, I don't know, in your living rooms right now, depending on how you like to decorate for the holidays. But this is a holly. An American holly. It's a plant, um, we live on the coastal plain, the Atlantic coastal plain. It's a plant common on the Atlantic coastal plain. Um, this is a female. They actually have different uh, sexes, the different plants. Um, so the females have berries, the males don't produce berries. And you need two of them to produce berries. So if you're trying to get berries on a holly, make sure that you have a female and make sure that there's a male nearby that can make it have berries. But yeah, beautiful evergreen tree that we have that's native to the area. Talk about winter tree ID really quick. So if you're interested in learning how to identify trees, winter is obviously, you know, might not be the easiest season to get started. But there are certainly ways that you can ID trees in the winter, um, especially starting off with evergreens. Right, so in terms of evergreens that you can find at the preserve, eastern white pine is one of them. This is a beautiful stately tree and they have their needles in bundles of five, also known as a fascicle, these bundle of needles. Um, beautiful tree, like I mentioned before, it gets the scaly bark, commonly planted um, in people's front yards, one of our native evergreens. We also have the eastern red cedar, which is actually not a cedar, it's a juniper, so a little misleading name there. It has these scales that are arranged spirally on the twigs, which you can see there if my camera focuses, perfect. Um, and also those scales will turn into spikes as it gets older, the bark peels, and also reveals a nice red underneath. There are also pitch pines that live on the preserve. They are common on the bluffs that are on the Long Island Sound by the beach. These pines, unlike the white pine, have three needles to a bundle. They also produce pine cones that are often sealed shut and sometimes even require fire for them to go to seed. And finally, we have the common yew, which is actually an escapee from cultivation. So this is the same yew that you might have growing in your front yard. They also have flat needles, as you can see here, and they'll get those characteristic red berries. Though these invasive thickets do look quite Tissusian, um, you know, this is obviously not what a healthy forest in this region looks like. 
Now that's not to say that they're not providing um, value to the wildlife, but in terms of a species diversity standpoint, there's certainly less because of them. Now look at this. We have a bird of prey here. Someone. I don't know who it is. We have a, a decent number of bird of prey that are on Long Island. Um, whether those be hawks, um, like the red-tailed hawk, there's a couple red-shouldered hawks, um, osprey as well. Um, there's some bald eagles that are making their way on the island again. Um, I believe there's a breeding pair somewhere along Hempstead Harbor. Okay, so speaking of birds of prey, I did actually find an owl pellet, and I've broken it up a little bit so we can see the contents. And what this is, is essentially the owls will eat their prey, and then the undigestibles, the fur, which is this grave stuff, um, and the bones, which obviously are the bones, um, are going to be vomited back up. And similar to the way that animal tracks can be used to determine what type of animals are living in an area without having to actually see them, owl pellet dissection can be a pretty good proxy for what type of rodents and small mammals are living in a woodland. So by identifying these bones, see we have a claw right there, looks like some vertebrae, and these are pretty big bones, so I'd say this came from one of our larger owls. Um, and, you know, you get a good idea of what species might be living in a preserve without having to wait for some critter to poke his head out of a log. Right. So, the preserve overlooks parts of Long Island Sound. Um, we're actually between two areas, or the Port Washington Peninsula splits two areas of the Sound up, the Eastern and Western Narrows. So we're overlooking the Eastern Narrows right now. With winters becoming warmer, there are some impacts of climate change on the Sound. So. If you look just 40 years ago, um, compared to today, some areas of the Sound have warmed, you know, almost one and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And although that doesn't seem like it's that significant, there have been some really significant shifts in the species composition of the Long Island Sound. So there used to be a lot of lobsters here. Um, when the first colonists came around, there's anecdotes of piles of lobsters on the shore being two to three feet tall. Um, and now obviously they're completely, almost completely absent from the ecosystem as well as the fishing economies that are on the North Shore. Additionally, as any fisher would attest to, winter flounder have been suffering in the uh, previous years and obviously with a name like winter flounder it's no surprise why warmer winters are really causing these species to struggle. But there's also a positive aspect to these things. Um, there are some species that are you know maybe further south distributed. Um, I believe black sea bass is one of them and they've been doing better in the Long Island Sound. And so we have this huge shift in ecosystem that's going on just beneath the surface of the water that we really aren't seeing, um, but it can have quite significant impacts. So the water is absolutely gorgeous today. <laughs> it almost looks like, like a cotton candy palette. Um, but I just want to make a note about the turbidity of the water so you can see how clear it is down there. Um, and we have this, you know, beautiful array of colors, this, you know, aqua and greenish, which you can see. Um, and a lot of this is actually due to the cooler temperatures that we get in winter. So the water is clearest usually around March here in the Long Island Sound because that's when it's the coolest. And that's when things that muck up the water like phytoplankton are going to be at their lowest because they need some warmth to be able to grow. So winter is certainly a time to come and enjoy the beauty of the Long Island Sound. All right, so we can see these brambles, this invasive brambles is actually teeming with life. We have a, a, two squirrels. There's one down there, which you can see, and there's one up there. It's a little bit further, hard to see. Um, there's a decent number of house sparrows, and they're feasting on the red berries of the honeysuckle. And this is uh, Amur honeysuckle, you can see. So this is actually, it is an invasive plant species. Oh, wow. We have some cedar waxwings here, and they're enjoying the berries of the Amarani suckle. Oh, wow. I've never seen this many so close. Right, another really nice thing about being outdoors in the wintertime is without the leaves, you get different views. So normally you wouldn't be able to see the pond from up here, um, which is kind of cool. Thank you for joining me on this uh, virtual nature walk here at the Sands Point Preserve. Hopefully you guys will be able to make your way down and see it for yourself at some point. I hope you enjoyed that virtual nature walk and that you learned something new. 
So bundle up, dress appropriately, and come on down to the Sands Point Preserve. Enjoy some beautiful time outside and the grandeur of winter. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. Get some much needed nature RX. Times have been stressful, but a little bit of time outdoors can do wonders for both your mental and physical health. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope to see you soon.